Hello, welcome to Green Gunner 75. I'm Buddy. So we're going to wrap up the saddle project today. I got a little bit of uh, video to show you from the last month. Really didn't spend a lot of time uh, shooting video uh, out in the shop um, during this last month. Uh, it was just too hot. <laughs> uh, most days, uh, even late at night, you know, 10 o'clock at night, it was uh, 90 degrees in the shop with uh, about 90% humidity. So uh, it made it pretty uncomfortable. I just really just wanted to get out here, uh, get a little bit done, and get back inside. So, uh, all right, we're going to show you a little bit of that right now, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. So I've done some preliminary cleanup here at work here on the compound. Uh, cleaned everything up as much as I can. The next step is going be to repair these gouges um, on the front side here, uh, both sides here. So we got gouges all through the top here. So I want to get all that uh, filled in and uh, with some JB Weld and looking pretty nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my file and file down anywhere where it is raised up uh, just to kind of smooth it out. All right, that's not too bad. It looks like a rat's been chewing on it, but it's uh, at least there's nothing. The metal is not standing up, so uh, we'll go ahead and do the other part here, and then um, then we'll fill that in with some JB Weld and come back and uh, smooth it out uh, tomorrow. All right, same thing here. I just want to make sure it's smooth. So this is the JB Weld. Just going to mix it up right here on the corner of the bench on the plastic. One to one ratio. Okay, once we got it mixed up, and we're just going to press it in to the top here where we've got a lot of indentations. So what I'm doing is this is starting to set up just a little bit, so I'm using that to my advantage to help and build out that corner. Because the corner is all eaten up, so I'm trying to fill that in and uh, basically make a new corner. And 
and um, while it's wet it wants to sag just a little bit so it wants to sag down and I'm trying to build it up and we're pretty good all along uh, the front half here I've got one gigantic hole right here that is really wanting to sag down on so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit uh, do this side here and then uh, I'll probably have a little bit of JB Weld left over and I'll come back as that sets up to uh, help build that up. Uh, I want to get this done in one day and then um, and then do the uh, the sanding and finishing work tomorrow. So we'll let that uh, we'll let that sit, we'll let that cure and hopefully with any luck tomorrow it will be um, be any shape where we can go ahead and sand it down and uh, and reform the front edge get everything cleaned up in the middle here and uh, redo the back edge and then shine it up and I think we'll have a, a nicely repaired part all right so we'll set this aside and now we got this part So this one uh, looks like it's going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, a lot more of those, uh, a lot more of that front corner work that has to be rebuilt, and uh, I think that's going to make it a lot more challenging. Um, just trying to get those corners to uh, be thick enough to allow for for a sanding and uh, finishing tomorrow. So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and get started and see what happens. So once again here my method is to, uh, is to glob it up on the corner with too much and hope to get, you know, to get the corner to stand out past, um, past the, the natural edge of the, edge of the part to, uh, and then we will then sand it down uh, tomorrow to uh, to even everything out, if that makes any sense. And it serves uh, a couple purposes to do like that. One being, um, it's really hard to uh, to get the JB Weld to stand on a corner. It wants to sag. And uh, the other reason is is the JB Weld is going to shrink just a little bit so I want to make sure we allow enough extra material uh, for when it does shrink that, that it still uh, has repaired the damage spot. Now, what I don't want is this stuff filling in the numbers. So go ahead and wipe that off. Well, that looks pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is on the top here, um, we got some more of those hammer marks uh, where 
uh, the top of the machine had been used to, um, you know, to beat on things and flatten things out. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get that cleaned up. The Bondo mixes up a little bit different than the JB Weld. Just a drop of hardener. A little bit of hardener goes a long ways with Bondo. Just gonna put it on the top here and press it into those cracks and crevices. All right, starting to seize up now. Okay, so this is a prime example of what can happen if you get maybe a little bit too much hardener in with your Bondo, is you don't have enough time to do what you need to do. So I got everything covered, but I didn't get a chance to wipe off as much as I wanted to. As you can see right here, I've got quite a bit of buildup. So now this is start this is seized up now so I don't want to do any more of that because then I might pull off the bondo from the metal and then um, then I haven't done anything I've, I've still got the indentations and um, I just have to come back with some more bondo I don't want to do that so I'm gonna stop here and then um, all that means is tomorrow when we go to sand this um, just gonna need to do a little more sanding not that big of a deal. Bondo is easy to sand. So uh, all that means is, is just a little more sanding and we're not going to we're not gonna do any more with that. We'll just let the, let all the rest of the Bondo just go ahead and sit. And once it's set up, then it'll just come right off the Visqueen. And then, and of course, this will be sanded tomorrow.
let's go ahead and get this apron back together. So we've got the cross feed, uh, cross slide screw here, and uh, got the new nut for it. Everything uh, moves pretty good. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put this back first. All right, let's go ahead and first put some oil on it. Slides in here from the back. Something like that. Alright, so we got our bearings here. Making sure everything has got plenty of oil. Sure, we got plenty of oil in here. All right, this just screws on here, just like this. I'll snug that up tight. You got a mark here on top. We want that to be on the top uh, to line up the uh, dial with. All right, after you get this on, we've got some more bearings. Make sure everything is well lubed. All right, we've got a small brass pin that will go right here.
sure this is nice and clean. Oil everything up real good. Look at that, that's nice. So next we have the handle. I'll put that on here. Don't drop it. Inside that goes a little tiny roll pin. As you can see, it is going to be difficult to get in place. Need a little bit more convincing. There we go. All right, now we're gonna put the gib in. Now this gib before, it had a shim in it. Well, I wanna see how it does without shim. Cause I got a suspicion this shim was not an original part.
So it's got a little bit too much play. We are definitely going to need the shim that went in with it. So the saddle is pretty well finished, um, not a whole lot left to do on it, um, got to do, uh, do some work on the taper attachment, uh, but we'll do that later on, uh, I'll probably complete that off camera. Uh, we'll see how it goes, we'll see if there's anything interesting um, to do, uh, show on that, but mostly it's just going to be uh, you know, removing paint and, and getting it cleaned up. So uh, well, let's zoom in on this saddle and uh, take a look at it a little closer. Okay, so here is the saddle. Uh, it came out pretty good. Everything uh, got repaired very nicely and um, uh, it's all painted up and put back together and um, I'm really quite pleased with uh, how it works. The, uh, the backlash has improved uh, considerably. Uh, so when I first got this uh, lathe, the backlash was uh, 500 thousandths approximately 
Um, yes, you heard me right. I did say five hundred thousandths. You would have to turn this knob uh, quite a few times to get the uh, to get the cross slide to move. Uh, so that has been taken care of. We got a new nut for the uh, the cross slide screw and uh, really tightened things up. Uh, so it's not perfect, but we have gone from five hundred thousandths of backlash to uh, about sixty-five thousandths. So, is that great? No, of course not. But, uh, is that a whole lot better than we had before? <laughs> you bet. So, uh, it's something I'm going to be able to, uh, I'll have to learn to uh, work with for the time being. Um, until we can get a chance to make a new screw, uh, cross slide screw for it, uh, to tighten that up. It's just going to be, uh, just going to be one of those things to, um, to work with, and I'm quite certain I can work around it. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, the uh, the cross slide screw and uh, both the compound screw uh, both need to be replaced. The compound screw uh, it's uh, it's got some uh, inconsistencies with it, so it's uh, it doesn't doesn't turn very smoothly. But um, it's better than it was when I first got it. Uh, pretty much this was locked up it wouldn't turn at all so we've improved that quite a bit and um, it's just going to be a matter of, uh, of making some new parts for this um, once, you know once we get it back together and um, that's a good project uh, to um, to improve on my skills so uh, future projects lots of future projects basically this this whole saddle is going to be uh, some future project work on it. So uh, we talked about some wear issues on the um, on the cross slide ways. Uh, there's definitely some uh, some wear issues. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to uh, cause me a great deal of difficulty right now, but it may be something I may want to address later on. Uh, I had some uh, had some good people suggest uh, maybe learning how to do scraping, um, so that may be maybe something I will look into doing. Uh, it's kind of an in, um, intriguing, um, I would say almost an art, uh, for what I've seen, and um, so it's um, it's kind of got my attention on how to do that, but um, just to set your mind at ease, I will not practice. On my lathe, I will get uh, I will get some uh, pieces of metal and practice on that uh, before I try to do anything with the lathe. So I will definitely uh, definitely want to get good at that before I go and and risk working on on my machine here. So uh, okay, well let's zoom back out for a minute. All right, zoom back out now, and um, so all in all, I'm pleased with how it came out. I would say that uh, this, the saddle was probably my greatest concern with the lathe um, in, in general. It had, uh, it had the most damage, the, the most wear, um, just all in all it, it, really, uh, it really worried me. Uh, so it, you know, it, it came out pretty good. Considering, uh, the, considering how it was, considering that you know uh, the compound wouldn't turn considering the uh, absurd amount of uh, backlash in the cross slide um, and we, we've been able to tighten that up we've um, you know, got everything moving like it should uh, is it as smooth as it should no it's definitely not as smooth as it should but it is moving a whole lot better and um, for that I'm pleased uh, still definitely gonna need to do a lot more work and um, something stuff that it can be uh, be repaired. I'm quite certain it's just going to be a matter of um, of getting the practice in and and learning how to do uh, to make the parts to uh, to repair it. So uh, of course I'm looking forward to that challenge and uh, and all. So uh, this past month uh, it's been <laughs> it has been a really busy month and. Um, so uh, 
we have had a hurricane come through. Hurricane uh, Her Hermine uh, came through uh, not too long ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, about a week ago. And uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, it's my job as an uh, on-call employee uh, where I live and work. I, uh, I was out there in the middle of it, um, out in the wind and the rain, watching the uh, branches fly by. Uh, so that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. And, um, but, uh, so yeah, the, uh, tropics have been pretty busy lately. Uh, right now, um, this is the 13th of September, uh, 2016. And right now we have a, another tropical system that is forming, uh, basically right over top of our head right now. And, um, so they are actually experiencing some tropical winds out by the coast. Uh, I live in the middle of the state, so I, I, we're not exper experiencing that at all. But uh, should be a couple of interesting couple of days uh, here in Florida. Okay, so uh, we're going to try to get back and do a lot more shop work, um, hopefully over the next couple of weeks. Um, my work schedule is kind of uh, pretty chaotic right now. It's it's. It's preventing me from um, really getting a lot of shop work done and and getting out those weekly videos. Um, so I'm hoping to get you know as um, as the summer winds down and things start to cool off, I should have a lot more time to to get in the shop and get a lot more work done. So I'm um, looking forward to that. I really need to get this laid done quickly. Um, I'm going to show you a reason why. This gear is off the gear train uh, on the back side of the lathe and it is starting to rust. Good old Florida weather is uh, really getting me right now. I've got to get this stuff back together and get it running and uh, get lots of oil on them and all. Because um, right now I'm going to have to put this back in evapor rust and try to get the rust back off again. But of course the evapor rust will take it right off. But um, that's, that's not good. I'm not, not too happy about that. But that is, that's what you get when you live in Florida because the humidity and uh, heat and humidity just, man, it just makes metal rust. Well, I guess that is it. Um, I hope to, uh, hope to have a video coming out here uh, within the next couple weeks. I don't think I'm going to be able to go weekly here for a while. Uh, like I was saying, work is just, just too hectic. So um, the next job on the lathe will be the headstock. And that, that should be a pretty interesting and um, exciting job to do. And um, hopefully it won't be as complicated as as I've heard, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it is. We, you know, um, the gearbox was really complicated. The uh, the apron was pretty complicated, and we uh, we made it through that. So um, let's do that headstock and see what happens. I'm looking forward to it. So. Uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, subscribing. Uh, this channel is just taking off. I'm, I'm really excited about where it's going. And uh, I especially want to thank everyone who has been uh, sending me those comments. Um, Y'all are great. Thank you so much for your advice. Um, it, it's uh, really helping me out a lot uh, with this project and, and all. So, uh, so keep those comments coming. Let's keep them positive as, uh, as some of the other YouTube creators uh, will say. Uh, love those good positive comments so uh, I guess that's it so if you have not uh, not already subscribed go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button mm, somewhere around down at the bottom click that button and uh, so that way you'll get updated on my latest uh, videos so uh, once again I want to thank you for watching and uh, y'all have a good evening